um, as we were talking with Roshan, he said, do you actually have a PowerPoint presentation to present? And I said, coming from Microsoft, that would be incredibly redundant and that you probably don't want to see anything in terms of slides from me. <laughs> so on that note, uh, my name is Amrote Abdullah. I'm the director for startup engagement and partnerships, uh, working specifically with our VC partners and our startups to really drive innovation in Africa. So let me give you a bit of a background. Uh, Microsoft in 2013, February, actually launched uh, the For Africa Initiative, which is an initiative with a commitment from the company to drive three big areas in Africa. One is skills, which is how do we actually upskill the workforce in Africa? How do we invest in skills so that skills are transferable, but we're actually also adding value to the existing workforce in Africa? The second one is around innovation, which is how do we innovate? What do we need to do to actually drive startups, innovative ideas to come out of Africa, but to also gain a platform across Africa? The third piece is affordable access. So all of you I've seen have either smartphones, tablets, or laptops that you're working on, but how do we make those affordable? How do we make them accessible so that the guy down the street can actually also have access to content and information at all times? So those are the three big areas. Now out of that, what I work on, what I drive is the innovation piece. And by that, uh, it means literally driving a startup, which is how do you actually innovate within a company like Microsoft? But more importantly, because it is such a green space in Africa, it's actually quite a challenge to even come up with a concept of what does it mean to identify innovation? What does it mean to actually scale innovation? And I think earlier, as they were talking and introducing, you know, innovation and startups has become the sexy new word across Africa, right? Everyone wants to do innovation, everyone wants to talk about entrepreneurs and startups. But when you really look at the hard facts about what it takes to start a company, what it takes to drive a city like Nairobi to become an innovation hub, there's actually quite a lot that goes into it. So let me start off with one thing which I think was actually mentioned by the previous speaker. The first piece is around infrastructure. And this is both hard infrastructure and soft infrastructure. The hard infrastructure is what do you need to drive a hub like this one, like 88 MPH, Nairobi Garage, NILAB, MLAB, IHUB, what, do, what does it take to actually create a space? Is it just the four walls that's needed to actually get people to come in, or is, actually, is there more that goes into it? So the first piece is connectivity, right? And the second piece is the mindset, which I think is really the, the soft infrastructure that's not really talked about. So for us, as we're thinking of innovation, you know, there are many cities that we can go and set up offices in, uh, and we do have offices across the country, but the continent, but when we are talking about innovation, there really are very few places that we invest heavily on. And that is our partnerships with hubs, accelerators, incubators across the continent. So for that, the way we're looking at it, innovation involves the mindset and the skills, but the mindset is really, if you're talking to an entrepreneur today, are they okay to take an idea Try it, fail at it, and then try it again. Because that's innovation at the core of it, which is that you may not get an idea, nail it, and make a success out of it right away, but the ability to try again and again is a key part that I think is not mentioned enough or not encouraged enough. So that's one piece. The second one is, as you're talking about innovation, can you actually make great success stories out of them? And the piece of that is the monetization. And I know a lot of people don't perhaps think of it in, in, in thinking of you know, how do we make the next big company, but is an innovator allowed and is he able to actually monetize and make money out of it? How many of you are entrepreneurs in this room? Raise by hand. How many of you want to make money? How many of you want to make a lot of money? Excellent, <laughs> that includes me. But the, the, but the point is, there has to be an element both from a regulatory point of view from an IP, intellectual property point of view, that allows you to monetize that idea. And so there's a piece of that we, that we as Microsoft are working on, which is how do we actually protect innovators? So that your idea is great, it's great, it's solving a lot of problems, but you're also able to monetize on it and then move on to your next venture, which I think is the idea and, and the progress that we want to see. And that for us is a real mark of success as we're talking about you know, what great ideas have come out of Kenya. Impesa is one that a lot of people talk about uh, from an innovation point of view, but should we not have more, right? And so there's an, there's an ability to scale, to go bigger, but also solve problems as you go along down the road. So for me, I, I, I'll sort of summarize and stop there uh, and open it up for questions, but those are the big areas for us that are really critical in, in defining and identifying and driving innovation on the continent. <coughs>